Hey you guys, so I'm going over some notes right now and I figured I would just make a little video for y'all which is just basically a little revelation nugget, it's nothing too big. I think I probably actually did a video about this before, um, pertaining to my previous word of marriage, but it's nothing huge. I even found a video about it last year that I probably um, added to my teachings playlist or Bible studies uh, playlist and it was just me wanting to share how... Um, which this is going to help y'all. The Lord can, um, for those of you who he deals with, like with dreams and stuff, like he gives you prophetic dreams, which honestly, that's everybody. <laughs> there's, there's some people who think that the Lord just deals with certain Christians that way, and that's not true. Um, you see in Job that, um, I don't want to misquote the scripture, but basically Job uh, insinuated that the Lord comes to us. He waits until we fall asleep to come to us in a dream or in a vision of the night to give us our instruction or to seal our instruction, whether it be a warning, um, a prophecy of some sort pertaining to your destiny, a school he wants you to go to, something like that. Because I think that, um, I think one reason he does that is because there's not a lot of people. God is always speaking to you. You don't have to be saved to be really, really close to the Lord for him to speak to you because he gives everybody dreams. That's also in scripture. I'm going to touch on that. But um, people may not always be sensitive to the way that God speaks. That's why you have a lot of people that say like, well, God never speaks to me. Like I can never notice the Lord is speaking to me. He's always speaking. You're probably just not consecrated enough or you're not really focused and kind of tuned into him enough to notice the things that he's speaking through. God can speak through movies, TV shows, music um signs billboard <laughs> like literally this is his matrix this is his world he speaks through everything you know so um i think that one reason he comes in a dream is because however he was originally trying to communicate what he was trying to get through to you you probably weren't catching it so that's when he goes into a dream or that's when he comes in a dream and that's why job says you know um he speaks once yea twice but man perceives it not because of that, because I told you first and then second, or he uses people to come say something. And sometimes it'll just feel kind of coincidental. Like, why do I keep hearing this same thing from different people where it just keeps popping up? You know, that's the Lord obviously trying to get through to you. So if you haven't caught it yet, sometimes your conscience or your spirit or your spiritual ears can just re be really, really dull. You're not really in the Lord like that, or you don't really know him. You're not familiar with the ways that he speaks. So you'll probably catch it, but it's not enough to really get into your subconscious the way he wanted to, to convict you and to actually cause a change in course or action. So that's actually what dreams do, because when you're dreaming something, especially if it's a dream from the Lord, it will be deeply embedded into your subconscious. Even if you don't know how to interpret dreams or you don't really know what it means when you wake up, it's, it's going to be in your, that's what he wanted. He wanted to record it in your heart. So then it's going to kind of go, it's always going to kind of fold up to your conscience. Um, you may forget, I've, I've had like, for example, you can forget the dream entirely and let's say the Lord gave you a dream about somebody, somebody that you hang out with that he's trying to expose to you. And let's, whether you remember the dream, but you didn't really understand it, or you just kind of decided to toss it like, okay, whatever, I don't know what that means. Or you forgot the dream. But the next day you're with this person because the dream is embedded and recorded into your subconscious per the Lord. Because there's many different faculties to us. <laughs> if you want to get through to somebody, the best way to get to plant a seed or a message is through your subconscious. Which is why, you know, the elites, they use movies and they use music and stuff like that to um, mind control you. They know how to get it recorded in your heart so that you can start walking out and acting the subliminal messages that they put in the film. So stuff like that. So let's say like the next day you're hanging out with that person. Then all of a sudden something triggers, <laughs> you know. Like, I don't know why I feel like this, but I just feel a little off about her. You know, it can be something like that. So the Lord actually knows how to get through to several different people. They don't have to be Christians. You don't have to be a seer. You don't have to be a prophet and be like a mad dream interpreter. You know, it, it would help you if you were that, you know, but he can get his job done the way he wants to get it. He will plant that seed in your heart and, you know, all of a sudden you'll start having like a discomfort about this person. And then, you know, maybe a few weeks later, not saying this will always happen because you could really just be spiritually dull and it may never happen, but you could be like, oh, I did have a dream about that person. You know, I did have this weird dream, you know, that's showing me they were kind of shady or they weren't really my friend, you know, something like that. So that's one reason. Um... 
we don't we don't always catch him when he's speaking because we're not familiar with the ways that he speaks. People who are not really intimately acquainted with the Lord as believers, as his children, they don't know how he speaks. So he has to take different measures, um, and it will always be through dreams. And um, dreams are not dreams from the Lord are not just for Christians; they are for unbelievers. We see that with Abraham and um, his wife Sarai when they went to. Um, I think one of the places was Egypt, but it was two different kings. And actually one king, I think he was a believer. He was a believer and he had a dream from the Lord, but there was one who wasn't. And he didn't even know anything about Abraham being a prophet. He didn't know about him being married. He thought that Sarah was his sister, stuff like that. He, how, did, how did he find out the information? <laughs> the Lord gave him a dream. He showed him in a dream where he was airing. The dream had to be profound enough and convicting enough in his spirit for him to know what sin he was actually committing. Somebody who's a heathen who doesn't even know Yahweh, you know. So the Lord literally speaks to anybody. I was just talking to my little sister about uh, two weeks ago. And uh, me and her were just having like a long, you know intimate conversation and she was sharing with me that she had some dreams the Lord was trying to give her the whole time about a relationship that she was in and um it, it personally made me happy of course because I'm like big sis and I'm like big Christian sis so I'm like that's right Lord deal with her you know <laughs> so it made me happy to see that he I didn't know because me and her weren't talking um that he was dealing with her even though she probably didn't recognize it as a dream from God, she would she was telling me how like, you know, I noticed that any times I would have, you know, dreams about coming to them about this, they always had this weird reaction and um she caught on eventually that it was the Lord trying to show her, expose that person's heart to her, and I confirmed it for her. And um I'm trying to get her onto dream guidelines and stuff now to kinda of help her out. <laughs> she doesn't want to write them down. Nobody likes to write. I love to write. I think a lot of people don't really want to get into the whole dream thing. Like I tell y'all in every video, like you need to write your dreams down. <laughs> like write your freaking dreams down. Like they're very, very important. Even if you don't like writing, just start start recording it on like a voice recorder on your phone. And remember, try to remember, ask the Holy Spirit first to give you remembrance of anything you may have forgotten, but every single detail you could possibly remember from that dream, record it. Um, and when you're ready, you can always write it down whenever you want to. So, I like writing, so I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind writing. I got like four big binders of dreams, so I don't care. So, um, yeah, that's one reason. Um I mean, we live in the world, we have a lot of demonic frequencies and sound waves all around us. It's just demonic networking 24-7 with everything, just the course of life. Yes, it could be television, it could be a lot of different stuff. So you may not always be in a place, unless you're somebody really in the spirit that's freely consecrated and, you know, makes that time to spend with God. You're not going to be somebody that's recognizing him when he's speaking in, diff in many different ways. It's not going to happen. So he will come to you in a dream. And trust me, I've had times where like I wasn't really in the spirit and God just like dropped a dream that was like so amplified, <laughs> just like so he can get through to you if he really wants to. He's not blocked by the enemy in any way. So, um, and I think the second reason, I probably already said the second reason in regards to the subconscious. Yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> I hope my cleavage isn't showing, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, so, basically what I was going to say was, um, since the Bible says that God seals his uh, instruction for man, whether you're righteous or not righteous, it doesn't matter, since he seals that instruction in your heart while you're sleeping, so let's say the father, he can give you prophetic dreams that are consisting of his plans for your life. No matter how big or small, no matter how far away or how close, there's dreams where they're just more so foreshadowing, showing you the next season in your life, which could be like six months to a year away. Not really regarding his plans for you, but you know, just prophetic stuff, stuff that's going to happen at this point in time on a timetable or um, something... I like to always center it around dreams involving somebody else. And let's say the Lord is showing you like specific, precise detail about this person who is to be your spouse or this brother or sister that you're going to be in some type of ministry with. So you have the dream it's recorded. You fully understand this is the will of the Lord It's prophetic. And um, 
Yes, yeah, so it's kind of set in stone in the sense that it's his will. One thing I had to learn is that God's will can change. <laughs> and I don't think he'll ever do that without letting you in on what he's doing. Um, my mistake that I had shared last year was um, I actually did have not <clears throat> I did have him giving me those dreams, showing me that that situation or his plan was changing. But because I was still stuck, and don't ever make this mistake, sometimes we can still be so stuck on the prophetic dreams God gave us two or three years before that we kind of ignore the most updated recent ones he's given us about that situation. So we think that it's still in effect and it's not. He's showing you it's going to change or that it's not going to happen. So uh, be careful to catch those dreams too. So um, yeah, the Lord can show you his plans for you especially if it's involving other people. And he can even show it so conclusively to the point where the prophetic dream is even showing you how the end is supposed to happen. And um, it's not its not a lie. It, um, I, for example, my dreams would be, um, there's the law of uh, double dreams, which is that the Lord shows you the same scenario or the same situation more than once. He's confirming that it's set in stone, it's going to happen. That type of thing. So let's say, you know, you go through the um, the seasons or the course of whatever, and it gets to the um, time where these things are supposed to manifest or be brought into fruition. And it doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. And what I found so interesting is that, and basically what the whole the point in this video is, the Lord always has foreknowledge of how something is going to play out or let's say maybe it's you maybe it doesn't have anything to do with somebody else and what they did or didn't do it could just be you it could be the lord gave you dreams about what he wanted you to do who he wanted you to do it with and you decided to go another way even though in the dream you vividly saw future speaking how y'all would be doing it in graphic detail where y'all would be obviously those things are not going to happen if you don't walk along the course of that prophecy correct so it can change okay so what I found interesting is that when things like that happen for us, because of our perspective, we're not the Lord. We're not all knowing and all seeing the way he is. We get our instruction and our insight into what he has planned for us and what we're going to be doing from him. You know, so we don't we don't have any other way of knowing that until he delivers it to you. So for us, it's just kind of like what the heck happened Oh my God, Lord, you showed me this. And, you know, sometimes you can feel in the dream it's so set in stone, like you were sure that this was going to happen. And that's the way he delivered it to you. So, you know, those questions will arise, like did the confusion, the potential uh, deception. Oh my God, I feel like I was deceived. You know, what the heck happened, Lord? Did you change your mind or did the prophecy change? Blah, blah, blah. And from my experience, I've learned that God can have foreknowledge of how that was always going to turn out. And what he basically taught me is the prophecy and the plan that he delivered to you that was set in stone, it's delivered to man to make us accountable to the revelation of what God's revealed will was. It may not always come to pass, but he had to give you I don't yeah, he had to give you that chance to carry out what he wanted you to do before he can actually um, execute judgment for rebellion or disobedience. So that's why sometimes you will have a dream, whether it's just you and your disobedience, or it could be somebody else involved in that prophecy or that plan that God kept confirming and showing you in dreams. Um, it was very much God's will. It was very much shown to you to be set in stone because that was, I feel like, a. it just kind of gives me that vibe of like, you know, the Lord knows the end from the beginning of the beginning from the end. That was his original plan. So that's why it felt so set in stone. It felt so secure because he didn't have any intentions on changing it. But at the same time, he knew what you were going to do the whole time. So the, the reason why it was delivered to you in a way that it's going to happen regardless is because you or both parties involved were supposed to be submissive to his will in order to make that happen. So he can know for knowledge wise that it wasn't going to happen, but he still had to deliver it to you in a way to where he makes both parties or everybody involved accountable because everybody knew and understood what the will of the Lord was. So um, I just want to put that out there because sometimes we can feel like we were deceived or God lied to us. Like he didn't lie. He always knew it was going to happen, but he doesn't have to share that with you <laughs> because think about it. If I'm trying to test my daughter about something or I'm trying to expose your heart to you, 
in a certain way that's going to test your full and complete obedience to me. My personal experience was I had a word of marriage with somebody I was not attracted to. I did not want to be with this person. And uh, let's say the Lord wanted to use that just to see if you would sacrifice what you really wanted, your own personal desires from me, kind of like an Abraham and uh, Isaac situation, you know. Um, or I knew it wasn't going to come to pass. But I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you what my plans are. I'm going to show you you and this person together, where you're going to get married. I'm going to show you all that stuff. And all that stuff definitely was, God, was God's will. But let's say the father always knew that that was not the person you were going to marry. Does he have to share that with you? No, because that would blow up the whole plan of your sanctification and what you were, he, what he was supposed to birth in you and get out of you in that season. Because all you knew at the time was what he was sharing to you, or what he was sharing with you, and what he was revealing to you. That's all you were supposed to know, <laughs> you know. So God doesn't have to tell you everything. Some stuff will kind of come as a shock or a surprise, you know. And then maybe he'll give like another layer of that revelation or why things panned out the way they did or what he was really trying to do in that situation afterwards. So if I'm trying to teach you something, I'm not going to give you all the answers, <laughs> you know, in the beginning. So um, what I thought was so interesting, and one thing I was like inquiring around that time. Because he also was sharing me, uh, I wouldn't say that was a dream. He allowed me to feel how he felt about the person's actions. And he was just disgusted with them. It was like a, um, I couldn't tell if it was him or the Holy Spirit. It wasn't really a dream. It was like me kind of like being in between being awake and being asleep. And it felt like my spirit woman was still inquiring, like, Lord, is this really you? Is this really over? Like, is it done? And he stopped me midway. Like, he didn't even want to hear about the person. And he was like, ugh, like that. Like, I, it was like a sharp, just like, they disgust me. I don't want to hear about them type of thing. And then he immediately projected it to something else or, you know, revealing a new plan to me. So um, I just found it very interesting for me as a prophetess because I'm still learning from him. You know, how is it that God can give you all of these prophetic dreams of this one thing that was so sure to happen for like 10 years, you know, and then at the end it doesn't. But at the same time, he's showing you how he feels about the person's actions like he didn't he didn't approve or he didn't agree. And um, he led me to a video about it and he confirmed it after that. That just kind of ties into what I'm saying. God's foreknowledge, he can know. Like, for example, he knows where the me and you are going to hell already. <laughs> but at the same time, and I asked him this about five years ago, you know, uh, I think I was inquiring whether I wanted to ask him to tell me. <laughs> That's a stupid question. You don't want to ask that. You would, you know, you would hope that you're going, you know, to heaven. But he just simply told me, he said, well, whether I know or not, it still would be your choices that get you there wherever you're going. <laughs> you know, so. Even if I know that you're like, okay, even if you're going, you know, down there or whether, you know, going to be with him, it would still be your personal rebellion, your personal gradual disobedience and your own walk with him that would lead you to whatever path. So it doesn't matter whether he knows or not. He doesn't have to share that with you. You got you there either way it goes, you know. And um, one thing he also corrected me about when it comes to thinking like that, the just live by faith you're already saved, you're already proclaimed righteous being in Christ. So why would you be, to, to even entertain a thought that you would be going to hell is already unbelief, you know? So you should already have a mindset as a believer that I'm destined for heaven because believing that and keeping that faith in your heart towards that reality and that truth is what's going to keep you in righteousness and keep you in his commandments until you get there. Not the opposite, <laughs> you know? So it is kind of like one of those like rhetorical purposeless questions to ask the Lord like I mean I wouldn't be surprised if he was like well I mean it's up to you where you want to go <laughs> you know like why are you asking me that so um there's a lot of things in God's authority that he already knows pertaining to yes the end of your salvation where you're going as a Christian um the details of your life the plans of your life who you're going to marry how many kids you're going to have but he doesn't have to share that with you um even if there's individual wills, a part of his grand sovereign will, and you just know the individual in each phase, sometimes he'll do it that way purposely because it's not meant for you to know every single thing. He's not going to be able to get any real teachings or lessons through to you if he just tells you everything, <laughs> you know. So I, I could have known the whole time that this wasn't going to be your friend in 10 years, but, you know, I don't have to tell you that. That's not, that wasn't for you to know. Otherwise, you wouldn't have really learned what I wanted you to learn. So... um, 
I guess the message in this is um, God's foreknowledge of what's, oh, this is the way I wrote it, God's foreknowledge of what's going to happen is different from his experiential standpoint. He can know what you're going to do or how this person that was in this word or this promise or this plan with you according to his will was always going to um, react to it, whether they were going to comply and go along with it or run away. But um, he's still able, from a relational standpoint with man, to experience what he already knows is going to happen enough for it to produce emotion you know like because you may say well, like if he already knows I was going to do this and why would he get angry <laughs> you know like because as a father and as God in his heart somebody that wants a relationship with man and especially his children people who are already his children that's just an attribute of God that you can never take away he's God he's always going to know the beginning from the end but he chooses to experience each phase and experience, you know, giving man a choice with each detail of their life, each revealed will, each instruction he gives you pertaining to you personally and his word to make you accountable, even though he already knows what's in your heart and what you want to do. How could he how could he righteously judge you on judgment day unless he gave it to you anyway, at least to just make you accountable, even though I already knew what you're going to do. That's actually in scripture. I forgot who he did that with. It was somebody. Um. Y'all may end up posting it or I may end up posting it. It was somebody in the Bible. I think he sent one of the prophets to go prophesy against this person. And he specifically said, they're not going to listen to you. But for the sake of having them accountable of my word so that they can at least know, give it to them anyway. But I already know that they're not going to do it. Similar to how he told Moses when it comes to Pharaoh. Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go, that Israel is my son and my firstborn. If you don't let my firstborn go, I'm going to kill your firstborn. And he even said to Moses before he left for his journey, he's not going to listen to you. But he needed to make Pharaoh accountable to the word and the will of the Lord in order for him to be righteously judged. So there's a lot of stuff that God already knows. Like he already knows who's going to be saved and who's not. Um, but he may still have you in a season for three years praying for somebody because, and to be honest, that makes your judgment a lot worse <laughs> because that was three years of the Holy Spirit. Think about that. Convicting this person, dealing with their spirit. One part of it is definitely the Lord loving them and really wanting to give them a, cha a, a chance at freedom and salvation and really to be a part of his kingdom and his blessings. But another part of it, it's always like that kind of blessing and curse effect, like you choose. Or the double-edged sword that is the word. Or how Moses told all the uh, the children of Israel, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Through what? The word of God. <laughs> the word of God can be a curse to you or it can be a blessing to you. So it's not that God has intentions to destroy you. And he even lets us know in his heart that that's not his intentions. He doesn't take any pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. But... If you choose to refuse all that conviction, all that knowledge, all that those trials that the Lord brought you do to bring correction to you, the many rods that he used through the people, the experiences that you experienced, um, that was done. That was his grace. That was his extended hand to you. Let's say you refuse all of that. <sighs> the equivalent that your blessing would have been if you had taken his hand is going to be equal to the judgment. It's, it's like they're equal. It's a whole duality, you know, type of thing with it. So your judgment is going to be just as bad as your blessing would have been had you obeyed. So um, it's not really a question of what God knows. It's uh, I always say we only know what the Father permits us to know about ourselves about our lives, about our relationships, about other people he's exposing to us. We only know to the degree that, you know, like some people may say, like I do, a, I've done a lot of videos because um, the Lord deals with me heavily in dreams as a seer and he's always exposing people to me, relatives, relationships, like he's always exposing the heart, you know, people that I deal with. And, um, you know, people could probably say to people that God deals with like this, so you know everything. And it's like, no, nah, I only know what God wants me to know. <laughs> like, it's true. I only know what he shows me. There could be a lot of stuff about that that he's not showing me, but it's only meant for me to know this right now. So I always say for all of us, <laughs> just play it safe and uh, work with what you have, okay? You're responsible for what you do know. 
obey that. <laughs> and if he wants to show a little bit more, that's by his grace and that's his choice. But, um, for example, I'm so happy to be out of that situation, but what I discourage or tell another sister in Christ who's in a similar situation in a word of marriage with somebody she probably isn't attracted to, or she's probably suffering narcissistic abuse from, would I tell her, oh yeah, the Lord's going to send you somebody else, you know, get out of that Heck no, <laughs> because that's her word. And for now, as far as she knows, this is the will of the Lord. You, if, for you to leave that without his permission or him releasing you, that would be disobedience. There's probably something in that phase or that season he wants you to learn. He wants to produce in you maybe something you can only learn from this person, this experience that you may not get another chance to. He doesn't have to give you another chance. So I would never do that because I understand that God's will can always change, but it may not or until it does you stay where he told you to be, <laughs> okay? This is his will for now, so I will obey this. If it changes, cool. If it doesn't, this is my divine, you know, placement until then. So, so yes, um, God has foreknowledge. He is sovereign. He is all-knowing. Uh, if you think too far about that, it will scare the crap out of you and cause you to doubt yourself. <laughs> so I would not do that. Um, your responsibility as his people is just to obey what he's taught you and what he's delivered to you so far. That's all you're responsible for. He's not going to expect you to be responsible for what he hasn't shown you, what he hasn't told you, all of that stuff. No. Um, your personal convictions, your personal revelations of God's prophecies, his plans, all that stuff is for you. When he chooses to elaborate or expand those things, then he will do it in his timing when he feels like you're ready or when he feels like he wants to show you a little bit more. Um, there are several things the Lord shows me, good things, <laughs> you know, about like uh, his plans for me. And I'll, I will literally be begging him like, oh my God, Lord, can you show me a little bit more about this or this specific detail? You know, I'll just be all cute with him and stuff. And like, he will not do it. <laughs> I can spend months asking the Lord, like, could you show me a little bit more? And he will not show me anything. And then eventually he'll show something. So we don't control God, okay? There's some stuff he may not want you to. Maybe he wants to surprise you with some stuff, you know? So you can't manipulate or pull God's finger or his leg with anything. He has a, I believe, I really do believe this, that God has a personal prophetic timetable with what he shows you and when. <laughs> You can cry, you can pray, you can fast for the answer for this, and you will get nothing. He can hear everything that you're saying, okay? If he wanted to, he could show you everything, okay? But he's not going to do that right now. So, um, I can have, so yes, I can have foreknowledge about the end. I know who you're going to marry. You don't know that. <laughs> I know who, how many children you're going to have. I know the names of your children, um, I know that you're about to start this job that I led you and confirmed for you to go into, but that you're going to be fired in three weeks. So I'm not telling you that, you know, it's just like, and, um, he's still able to know this stuff, give you his revealed will. And then once the stuff plays out, he is very much able to actually experience an emotion behind it as if he didn't know. <laughs> it's not that he didn't know. It's just that, you know, he's chosen to kind of project himself into this human experience because of course if he wants a relationship with man he's he has the right to do that that's his choice I mean he could choose to just you know take a um take the back you know take the back uh what I was like trying to say the uh back stance you know what I'm trying to say he can choose to not be involved with mankind at all and already know how this is going to end and just not be involved and just watch or he can be involved, very much involved. And he is very much involved in everything. That's in scripture. He works everything according to the counsel of his will. Everything. Even what the wicked do. Everybody's steps are ordered. Everybody, you know. So, um, I can give you my judgments and my precepts and my instructions. I can warn you in dreams as a wicked man what I'm going to do to you. What's going to happen if you go forward with this. Tomorrow you will die. And that'll be your last breath. I can do all of this different stuff. And yet and still... I can still become angry that you did it, even though I knew you were going to do it, <laughs> because that's, that's just the whole experiential realm from a relationship standpoint that he has towards his creation. It doesn't matter that I knew that you were always going to do it. 
the fact that you betrayed me by disobeying my commandments and rebellion, you broke that fellowship and that relationship. So he's still able to experience the disobedience, even though he knew you were going to disobey. Do you see the knowledge part of it doesn't really have the intimacy acquainted with it? I can know, but that that has nothing to do with like me giving you a chance to choose me um, in each detail. It could be any, with anything, not just salvation, but just really anything. Um, obviously, if somebody's affected by your choices, that shows that they held some kind of relationship or feeling in their heart for you if they got angry at what you did. So, I just wanted to share that with y'all. How long is this? <laughs> okay, 30 minutes. Um... Yeah, just because he's an all-knowing God doesn't take away from his relational experience with man. Um, and to be honest, every time I'm reminded of this by him, it puts the fear of God back in my heart because it just brings you back to the reality that you have a obligation and a part in this too to fulfill. Covenant or not, even as the wicked, you still have a, a, a loyalty or relationship to God because he's your maker. <laughs> you're still you're living a lifestyle that's refusing and denying his kingdom and his and his commandments whether you have a covenant with him or not you're going to have to answer to him and you're still everybody's obligated to him in some way so it just reminds me like be very careful to walk out in fear and trembling what he has given you so far for you you're responsible for what you know in regards to your your ministry your destiny Everything that God's showing you, you're responsible to fulfill that because he's given it to you. You know now, you know, and um, you don't want to be the person that God does experience that treacherous <laughs> feeling of betrayal with as a disobedient daughter or a disobedient son. I mean, him knowing what you're going to do the whole time shouldn't really even be a part of the conversation. Why is that even... The main issue is that, you know, he gave you a set of instructions and you didn't listen to it. So, um, and like I said, there's always that duality. There's always a blessing and a curse before you. With I, I feel like anything that God reveals to you or tells you, it's a decree. It's some form of decree because of his authority and because of the, the position that he's in. So... I feel like it's kind of equal in balance. The blessing could be really huge if you obey this and go through with it. And likewise, if you choose to rebel, the judgment for disobedience is going to be just as bad. But you don't know what that's like on the other side. So, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a curse. It's your choice. Okay? If you want to be blessed, obey him. And I, th I think a lot of our obedience is challenged because, you know, of how much we trust the Lord, too. Because sometimes, like, I know for me, I personally feel like he doesn't always have my, unconsciously, indirectly, you feel this, not purposely, that he doesn't have your best interest at heart. There may be some relationships he ordains with you. I'm like, why did you pick them? <laughs> like, why did you, you know, it's just kind of like, it, it tempts you to want to go in another direction. Like, uh, 